Okay, today's video, two element homebrew beam made from four telescopic whips, spider beam pole, and some PVC. The, uh, is set up currently for 10 meters, and it is working outstanding. I started putting this together yesterday when it was raining and cold outside, and I couldn't do anything, and it's working out pretty good. So what I've got is the uh, tube elements are separated about 8 feet 3 inches apart. The two telescopic whips are extended to where, let's see if I can remember correctly, the driven element per side is 103 inches. The reflector element is 107 inches per side so uh, i think the back is somewhere around 17 feet the front or the driven element is around 16 and a half feet uh, i had to adjust it when i put the reflector on there because it changed the resonant frequency so it's held up with the spider beam it's sitting on top i'll make a permanent setup once I get this down, now that the proof of uh, the concept is good. And let me show you how I'm keeping the spider beam supported. Oh, let me back up for a second to tell you. It is approximately 16 feet off of the ground, right at a half wave off of the ground. And it is working outstanding. Currently pointed northeast. So I'm picking up Europe like gangbusters, uh, everywhere from Italy to Portugal to Germany and England. So uh, it's doing outstanding. Uh, how I keep the spider beam supported is each section has a little hose clamp right here. I'm using, I think five sections to get it to 16 feet. Uh, one thing I did do was to keep from having any interference, the flagpole antenna has been disconnected. It is not connected to anything, it's just floating, so it's not resonant or anywhere near 10 meters, so it's not causing any kind of impact. But we'll let this down in a little bit. But I'm fixing to change directions from Europe to Africa to see if I can get any contacts in Africa. Uh, but later on, we'll take it down and we'll look at the construction. And uh, but I wanted to show it while it's deployed and working. So here it is. And we'll be back right in just a second. Okay, let's look and see what we've got here. I have lowered the antenna. It got dark over in Europe and Africa, so 10 meters just went blank. Anyway, let's start with this end, the driven element. This is the dipole that I made in a previous video. Let's walk to the other side. It's made of two vertical whips, 18 foot long, bought from Amazon. Inside this piece of PVC, uh, it's fed by this cable right here. And that right there, that's just some scrap that I had. The PVC was laying around. It screws into uh, some nuts. There's two nuts, one on each side here that the telescopic whips screw into and used as a dipole this can be used from 10 meters to 20 meters or actually it could be used on six also but i use it from 10 to 20 meters depending on what band i want to work <clears throat> had this for a, probably i don't know it's been close to a year now i think but it works good so what I did in order to use this dipole and make it work as a beam antenna is 
and I will show the, my temporary setup now and then I'm going to tell you what I'll do to make it permanent. I slide this into a piece of one inch PVC. I've got a couple of screws in here that I've used as set screws to hold it in place and to hold it level. Uh, so we got the dipole slid into the pipe here, the one inch PVC. Uh, oh, also inside this right here, there is another three quarter inch piece of PVC. Uh, so I've got three quarter inch running from here to about here and then the dipole comes in comes to right here so this is pretty solid and I'll tell you what I'll do to improve this later on currently I've just got this held in place with some screws top and bottom left and right uh, the other side this is just a piece of three quarter inch PVC that comes to two more telescopic whips and let's go look at how I've got these. This is the reflector. Could be used as a director too. But what I have is these are held together with coupling nuts. And uh, the coupling nut will only let it slide into the middle. And fortunately it stops right in the middle. So all I did to make this temporary was I taped this in. Let me undo this tape and we'll see the coupling nut that I use. It's hard to do this one handed. Okay, so now that that tape is loose, we can slide this out and you'll see the coupling nut right there. That holds two telescopic whips to together. It's not connected to anything uh, electrically. It's just working as a reflector only. So I'm gonna slide this back in to balance it back out. And worked real good. Uh, the modeling showed that it would have a significant amount of gain, which I believe I saw. Front to back was supposed to be, I think, about 12 to 15 dB. It seems like I saw that. Uh, you may look at this right here and say that the PVC is not centered, but as far as weight goes, is balanced. Uh, the coax and the ferrite core on the left here going to the driven element uh, counterbalance the PVC and the antenna on this side. So I don't really know too much else to say about this. Uh, as I said previously, it goes up 16 feet high and I use the uh, hose clamps to lock the spider beam uh, sections into place so that they don't collapse. But I'm very happy with the, uh, the results of this build right here. And what I'll probably do is I'll tape the elements uh, with a piece of marker tape so that I can know what I'm gonna need to set it for Next time I put this together, I don't have to put a, a nano VNA or anything like that to it. What else can I say? So, oh, what I'll do to make this permanent, now that I know the proof of concept is functioning, is I'll get a single piece, most likely a single piece of PVC. I'll fill it with structural foam. And this joint right here, I'll find something uh, this metal since it won't hurt anything to uh, go around and clamp this and make it a little bit more rigid. I'm not too satisfied with two pieces going into this T, although it's holding up fine. 
Uh, I'd really like something that I knew was one solid piece that went from the driven element to the reflector. So one solid piece full of structural foam with another type of thing right here. And I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it. That'll make it a nice permanent setup uh, or semi-permanent setup. Uh, I'll only raise and lower this when I use it uh, because I live in a situation where I can't have a permanent installation like this on my property. Anyway, uh, I think what I'll do now is I'll show the radiation pattern as the model shows it, which I believe I saw that it worked out as the model showed. And we'll look at that radiation pattern. Uh, let's go look at that right now. Okay, here we have the radiation pattern of the antenna previously shown outside. And as you can see, it has some very nice directional gain. If we look at the uh, view from on top, it's got a significant amount of gain this direction with a good amount of front to back uh, noise reduction on the other side. So looking really good. Uh, when we look at the details on the radiation pattern, what we can see is that it has a, uh, a max gain at approximately 29 degrees of 10.38 dB. So that's very good. Uh, it has a front to back ratio of negative 16.4. I can say that while using the antenna, I didn't hear anything from behind me. And from and behind me is uh, the, the Southwest and uh, Mexico. Normally I hear people that direction. I heard nothing. Uh, again, the uh, elevation angle was uh, roughly, the max radiation was at 29 degrees. And it's worth noting that the low angle radiation at about six degrees, we already had 1.2 dBi of gain at six degrees. So uh, a lot of directionality with this antenna which is probably why it works so well. And again, this radiation pattern is with the antenna at a height of five meters above the ground. So it's a half wavelength above the ground. That's where you're gonna see your best performance with this one. So this has been a very good build, a very successful build. And it's worth making a permanent setup uh, now that I know that it works well. Something that I can throw in the back of the truck and carry somewhere if I want to carry it portable. Because it is actually something that you could use portable. All you need is a place to uh, set up the spider beam. And the footprint uh, is very small, relative, really. I'd like to do something like this for 20, 20 meters, but I'm going to need... Uh, a lot more room than I have here at the QTH and uh, and all that. So it may come, but may not be real soon. But this one on 10 meters, this is excellent. So uh, anyway, hope this has been a good video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share. If you haven't subscribed, I'd uh, suggest go ahead and subscribe. I have lots more videos like this coming and it's all about just uh, helping out those who are in the ham radio hobby. And until the next video, take it easy in 7-3.